Welcome to the Northeast. This is Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. The air is salty, the axe is sharp, and the competitors ready. Over 60 of the world's top axe throwers have come to compete in this, the World Axe Throwing League's Canadian Open. The field of 60 has been battling it out this weekend for a chance to compete in the finals. And after some heartbreaking losses and stellar performances, we're down to the top six. Over the next two hours, these competitors will square off through double elimination. The best thrower will not only walk away with $6,500, they'll also earn a championship ring. Axes are about to fly, so get ready. The World Axe Throwing League's Canadian Open begins now. Inside the Halifax Exhibition Center, the 2019 World Axe Throwing League Canadian Open is here. Hi everybody, great to have you with us, especially if your name is Evan, because I'm Evan Lepler and this is Evan Walters, the commissioner of the World Axe Throwing League. This is the inaugural Canadian Open, this sport brimming with potential. What should we know if we're seeing axe throwing for the first time? Today is a double elimination tournament, and that means that we're going to have sets of three matches. So the best two out of three matches are what we're going to be going into and watching these guys compete in today. Yeah, the competition began earlier in the weekend, and we're going to begin with players who are undefeated in the winner's bracket. But let's talk about the scoring for this sport. Of course, we're going to see a lot of bullseyes over the course of the day. Oh, that's exactly right. Most of these guys are the best of the best throwers. We have the top six ready to go. So as you can see here, we have that one point on the outside. They're going to go inside with more and more points you have two and three um, we might have a few fours today and finishing off with that bullseye right there in the middle with the six points often the drama culminates with the kill shot that's exactly right on the very 10th throw they can go for the kill shot which is worth 10 points for a total of 64 yeah, perfect score is 64 and over the course of this tournament we've seen a handful of those scores the a bracket the winners bracket Mike Cup, Stephen Malvey, we'll see them first. David Sykon and Gavin Casey coming up. All four of these players are 4-0 so far in the tournament. Well, to get a little more, better lay of the land of the axe-throwing premises, let's send it to Melanie Newman for the story. Melanie. Thanks, guys. Well, you just explained the point system, and let's take you through the floor here now. It starts with this back line that's typically about 15 feet away from the board, and from there, you have three feet of movement. The front closest line is at 12. You cannot cross that unless the axe is already out of your hand, and you will see that a couple times today where someone's form takes them over, but again, the axe is already in the air. Now, a regulation axe is going to be about three pounds, and the minimum is a 12-inch handle, so the best form to throw that 12 inches is from this 12-foot line. Now, once the axe goes through the air, you typically only want to see one rotation. That's going to give you the best accuracy before it hits the board. Believe it or not, the harder you throw, the more that your accuracy goes down. And once we get here to the board, you will see that spray down between sets. That's actually to help the wood absorb a little easier because even though those blades are sharp, they're still going to have a little bit of trouble sticking to such a fresh backdrop. And of course, you want it to stick because you want those points, guys. It's important that the axe sticks to the board otherwise you don't get the points let's talk about the first competitors we're gonna see Mike Kump and Stephen Malvey they've both been they've been two of the best in the competition all weekend correct uh, Mike Kump has been in he actually came in with a seating with a perfect score one of two people to do so uh, Stephen Malvey also known as pops he's been in here and uh, he's been throwing in the community for quite some time and uh, always clad in his kilt he is here, uh, I think, to take a win, possibly. Malvi with his signature look, for sure. Both these players are Philadelphia area players. Kump is from Philly, Malvi from Burlington, New Jersey, his home venue, Urban Axe, is in Philadelphia. And, you know, anybody of any age can play this sport, as evidenced by these first two competitors, one of whom's 28, the other of whom is 58. Correct. With the last, uh, for our world championship this past year, we had a young lady who was all of 16 who was competing in the world championship. So they're going to take a, a few practice throws initially. Kump on the left, Malvi on the right and it's a it's a fresh uh, piece of wood how, how does that impact the competition 
Honestly, it's going to make it a little bit tougher to get those axes in because they aren't broken up yet. Uh, softening those boards with, like uh, uh, we had said earlier, with a little bit of water helps. But once we get a few axes in there, it'll, it'll soften up a bit more just to make sure that all those axes get in uh, nice and solid. As you see, that's why we have those practice throws, to make sure we get those drops out early. Well, both these players arrived in the semifinals by winning four matches. And again, it's the terminology can be a little confusing for newcomers like myself because it's the opposite of tennis or volleyball. The smaller portion is the match. The larger portion is the set. So 10 throws is the match. Each player gets 10 throws. They add up the cumulative score. And you have to win two out of three matches to win the set. In fact, both these players in their last two sets went the distance had to win it two to one in, in the rubber match. That they did. Six, six. This is throw two. Underway, each player with a bullseye on the opening shot. What, what should viewers be looking for in terms of technique? In terms of technique, you'll see a lot of people throwing with one-handed. You can also six, throw two-handed if you like. Uh, there are a throw few players three. who like to do that. Gives you a little bit of extra power. But with the one-handed technique, it's just a little bit of a flick of the wrist, and that's enough to send that rotation over. So that's a miss from Kump, unless did it catch the edge. If any part of the axe touches the line, it's considered six, a bullseye. Four. But it's no bullseye for Kump. So he's down by two after three throws. He bounces back. Did that catch the left edge of the bullseye Six. for Malvi? No, it did not. And Kump's fired up. Right. His first TV appearance here today. He's the New Jersey axe throwing champ. Couple bullseyes there. Six, six, switch sides. And they'll switch sides. Mike Kump has talked about how he's got an extensive bowling background. He's bowled a couple 300 games in his life. Thinks that has helped him handle the pressure of this type of moment. Absolutely, a lot of people like to refer to this as a millennial bowling. <laughs> that, make, that transition makes a lot of sense. A little more danger involved. You don't, really, you don't really cut yourself bowling. Solid throws there. So it's been Six, all bullseyes six, except for one tied, throw per person. Throw and we arrive at throw eight. A reminder to folks about the kill shot. As both players get a piece of the bullseye, that's good enough. Those kill six, shots you can see up there six. on the top left and right, those blue dots, those are worth 10 total points, but only on the 10th and final throw. The players are not required to go for those kill shots, but it will definitely give them the edge up. Living dangerously, Malvi. Six. And he catches six. the bullseye. This opening match coming down to the wire. Hey, Mike Kump is really enjoying the moment. We have a tie match right now, which means the, they're going to flip a coin to see who throws first. There's a little bit of tactics involved now because of how close the points are. So he's going to throw that coin. And his heads. Woo! Heads, so. Hoist! Pops chooses Mike Pump to go first, and he's going to throw in the left lane. Full gamesmanship. The 10th and final shot. Now Malvi needs to match it. To force us into sudden death, did he get the edge? It's oh so close, but they give him the kill. So we're into sudden death. What's the story here? Sudden death, all it is is first player to get the most amount of points is going to win. It could go into five throws of sudden death anywhere on the board. The highest points is takes this match. Went for the kill and missed it. One. So now all Kump has to do is hit somewhere inside the one. This is virtually over. That's correct. Missed opportunity. Kump punctuates this match with a bullseye, and he takes a 1-0 lead in this best of three semifinal set. One practice. One practice. 
In between each match, they're going to get that one practice throw as well, just to get back into the groove, try to get back in that right head space. So they take a, a breather, which allows us to, I mean, a lot of these competitors have only been playing for six months, a year, two years, and they've just fallen in love with the sport. How did you fall in love with the sport? That's the exact same way. It just sounded really neat. Saw people were doing it online, gave it a shot myself, and uh, six, the rest is history. Six, it's, uh, a lot five, of people come together two. just for the simple act of having fun with a little bit of axe throwing and a little bit of family. Couple of bullseyes for Kump and Malvi. Yesterday we had a chance to catch six, up with a fully native six, Mike Kump. Throw three. Last week I told him I was coming to Halifax for an axe throwing tournament. And they reacted about as, uh, as well as you would think. They're like, okay, yeah, okay, Mike, that's, uh, that's cool, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't, they don't uh, I guess, see how the big potential is in it yet, but here we are, ESPN. <laughs> so. <laughs> Mike Kump considered one of the favorites in this event, and you can see why. And he certainly doesn't look uh, too tight for this competition. He's relaxed and having a good time. Yeah, it seems, uh, it seems the, uh, he loves the camera at least. Both players are six, perfect six. through five throws side. in this second match to the set. Best of three. One thing to keep in mind with these players and, and having them be the top six right now, they are six. all... Very professional, and, have, and we're going to get Throw most seven. of those bullseyes and kill shots, as we saw earlier with the sudden death throws. But the thing that they all know is this is very much a mental game as well. And I think that Mike Pump especially is making sure to keep relaxed and to six. keep open six. so that way he knows that he stays eight. in that perfect headspace. Both contestants still perfect. Uh, let's bring in Melanie. Six. I understand that you, you've gotten a little insight into Stephen Malvey's kilt. Yeah, so he, he just really fell in love with it. And the funny thing about it is he's always saying you can't knock it until you experience the ultimate freedom in it. And I got a chance to talk to him before he started throwing. And he actually said, you know what, this weather has been the best for me to wear it. Which I don't know about you guys, I want more clothes with all the snow that's going on outside. But it must feel good to him in here. He's smiling, he's having a good time and tight contest so far. No, I mean, there's definitely a level of insanity to that comment. So to when you experience the wind chill of Halifax, Nova Scotia in early March. Tenth and final shot of Another this second game. match. Went for it. Blue glory for Kump. Now Malvi goes first. With this shot, he could lose and be brought into the B bracket. Oh, did the edge of the axe catch it? Yes, yes it did. What Kump has to do is he has to try to hit that kill shot as well. Otherwise, we go on to a third match. Shot by Kump, and we proceed further into sudden death. Now, last time we saw Malvi go for the kill, it became a one, and it was an easy win for Kump. Wonder if that will change the strategy. Kump first, puts it on the blue. The precision is remarkable, and we continue. It may seem a little easy back home, just with how well these throwers are throwing, but these are the top throwers in the world currently. It is an immense amount of skill on display. And be again into the blue. Ten points. And the pressure's back on Mike Kump. 
he answers the call. A little bit on the outside of blue, though. Both good. Switch sides. Are there mental mind games being played here between the two competitors? You know, there might just be. There's not typically uh, there's not typically this much animation in uh, in these competitions, but any part of the axe hits the blue, it's good. That's in there. Just grazes the left edge. Switch sides. Play it close. And as this continues on, each of these sudden death throws, uh, if they go up to five, then the only thing that will be active on those targets will be the kill shots. Anything else that they score on there will be not counted for. But it doesn't look like they show any signs of stopping. I think it was right around 10 years ago of that classic Syracuse UConn six overtime game in the Old Big East tournament. What's the most? Rounds of sudden death you've ever seen. The most I've heard of so far is eight. We might break that today. Tied at 114. And he missed it. He missed everything. Malvi just needs to hit the target anywhere, and we're headed to a third match. Oh, goodness gracious. That was living very dangerously. Switch sides. Keep going. I guess he had to go for the kill shot. So we press on. Deep enough into sudden death that only points for kill shots counted. It seems like we had already been past that five, so it moved on. And that'll do it. Mike Cump, after missing the target entirely, closes out Stephen Malvey. No hard feelings, though, it appears. Not at all. Like I said, this is a family, and every single one of these competitors are just happy to see the sport. It's the, it's the axe throwing dab, I guess, the, the kneeling dab. Mike Cump, out of Temple University, engineer from Philly. Survives in advance, and he's moving on to the finals in the A bracket, and Melanie Newman is tracking him down. Take it away, Melanie. Okay, so take us through this final couple throws right there. When your ax didn't hit the board, and then you kind of had a little renewal there with Pops missing the kill shot. Really, what was going through your head? I had no idea that we were at the point where, uh, at the fifth throw, if you uh, don't miss kill, or if you miss kill shot, it's only kill shot that counts. I didn't realize that, otherwise he would have just been able to throw a bull to take me out. But we had hit so many kill shots in a row that we were at the point that that's all that mattered. I didn't realize that was going to happen. I thought we were going to the third round, but things worked out well, I guess. I love Steve Malvey. <laughs> we could see that between you guys, and that really speaks to the community of axe throwing. But talk to us about this for a second. You said bowling helps your mental approach to this game, but you had some swag out here on the floor. So how do you maintain your energy to, to balance it when you throw? Uh, I just like to be relaxed. I like to have a good time. Uh, bowling, 20 years that I've done, has kind of put me in those pressure situations of where uh, you're not trying to get hyped up, right? You're trying to be calm and just trying to do your thing. And uh, I feel like that's kind of what I try to do at all points. Just have a good time. I want to have a good time for the crowd that's here today, absolutely, and the people watching at home. I love all of you, Philly. I'm going to do it for you. <laughs> they are happy that you're doing it for them today. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys later. Mike Cump, we certainly will see him later. He's victorious. We'll see Stephen Malvey later, too, because it's double elimination. That was just his first setback. Canadian Open coverage from Halifax continues. Insurance.com, the official axe throwing insurance provider of the World Axe Throwing League. Get your venue insured today.
Just so happens we are in Halifax for axe throwing in the great province of Nova Scotia. Chilly but beautiful here in March and inside the Halifax Exhibition Center. We've got one semifinal in the A bracket already done. Next coming up we have Sycon versus Casey. The other two players that went 4-0 and oh yesterday. Hey again, everybody. Evan Lepler with Evan Walters. If you're an Evan, we are especially glad to have you with us. What, if anything, surprised you about that first semifinal in which Cump narrowly prevailed in back-to-back -back matches? Well, it's, uh, I think that those that final drop was really the biggest surprise. I mean, he's been on fire pretty much this entire tournament, but seeing that drop uh, was probably, uh, probably got in his head a little bit, but we'll see. Alvi not done yet. Look at these players, also perfect yesterday. What should we know about Sycon and Casey from a style standpoint? From a style standpoint, both of, those, both of them have a fairly similar throw uh, with a bit of a just flick of the wrist. Uh, you'll notice there that Casey is throwing with his left hand. I believe he is ambidextrous, so maybe he might switch it up. I don't know. Uh, David Sycon there uh, was the runner-up at the World Championship in Chicago this past year for 2018, so he is definitely one favorite to win. Gavin Casey has said that his goal is to be able to throw perfect scores with both hands. He said he hasn't done it yet, but he's become very close to doing it, within one shot away from doing it. So, Sycon is on the left, Casey on the right. Casey, one of the two remaining Canadians still alive in this Canadian six. Open in the final six for Americans, two Canadians. And this sport kind of started in Canada. That's absolutely right. The uh, We started in Canada, it's exploded over the past few years, especially in the U.S., but now the World Action Six, League is competing four, in 15 12, different 10, countries around the world. Three. Where are the biggest hotbeds for axe throwing in the United States? Absolutely. The Philadelphia area is probably one of our bigger ones, but uh, Denver as well is also a Six, hotbed Six. of raw talent Go in four, axe throwing. Still two points separating you. We are lucky enough to also have a a uh, portion of Irish competitors coming over here uh, from Galway. Six, and six, sadly, they did not make it through to the top no six, five. but they put up a great fight. What stands out to you about the Irish throwers? That the six, best energy six. of Switch any competitors side. we've seen there yet. They are extremely happy to be here and representing all of Ireland. Casey's perfect. So far, Sycon had the one miss six, of the bullseye. Six. Bullseye there on the sixth throw. Again, a bullseye is six points. The ring closest to the bullseye is four, three, two, one, and then the kill shot, which he can only take on the tenth six, shot of the six. match, is ten points. 42, 40, throw eight. I think when, when you watch it on TV and you watch the best in the world, you can almost take for granted because they make it look so easy. Six, Just six. getting the axe to stick is not the easiest oh, thing for a new throw. That's right. The uh, There is a whole extra level of technique. There is a bit of a skill cap. Just you have Ooh. to take into consideration the throw. Six. That's a miss. Four. Yep, that uh, opens things up here. Oh, Casey oh, missed oh, it. Oh, so now we're even through nine Seven throws. Failed. 52 out of a possible 54. Flip it again. Call it in the air. He's calls it in the air. Competitors are struggling with that. Nothing else but calling the coin toss in the air. So. Sycon. I believe that grazes the edge of that kill circle. Again, sudden death beckons. Switch sides. Sudden death. Gavin Casey, 34 years old, from Kitchener. Left handed dagger right down the middle of the blue circle. That is good as well. Barely, I think. 
Yep. Overtime. Sudden death continues. Now they don't have to go for the kill shot, but I think just the level of competition suggests that if you don't, you're going to be a loser. Absolutely. And that Missed though by Casey, so Sycon takes the first match in the second round of sudden death. That's exactly why they have to go for those kill shots. One practice, yeah, one, one, practice. Sure. one practice shot apiece as they get ready for the second match in this best of three set. Let's take it over to Melanie. Well, guys, when we talked to uh, Mike just now after that first, he had even mentioned he wasn't sure when the scoring had fallen into place and the kill shot and sudden death actually ensued. It was a shot off. So actually, Pops is going to be the one who advances. It will not be Mike. Six. Pops. Time wow. two. Controversy. A little bit. Breaking <laughs> news. You heard Be it here first. Yes. Is Six. there a precedent Six. for this? Not Go yet. Three. Honestly, so far, this is uh, the first time you're watching it live that this has happened in a competition. So just to clarify, Kump missed Six. the target entirely. Six. The axe Four. fell Five. off. 18. Malvi went for the the kill missed it but it was still on the one and we were not at the point where the Here one should not have counted so the one six, should have counted six. there was a, a miss a application of the rules and therefore Cump's win is nullified completely that's correct the uh Cump is no longer proceeding on it is going to be pops steven malvey six, because six, he just narrowly got that inside that sides. one and uh that, a bit of an upset to be honest wasn't kidding when Cump said he loved Malvi. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe we'll see that matchup again. It is double six, elimination. Six, Kump now will come from the loser's six. bracket. Meanwhile, Sycon and Casey continue to pepper the bullseye. I think we need a smaller bullseye. Six, six, you know, it's, uh, it might happen in the future. The level of competition has skyrocketed just in the few years that we've been around. And so we've had to make some accommodations here and there, but uh, the the challenge will continue. Six, six, Whew. this is throw nine. Woo. Ninth throw of the second match, right down the middle. Icon and Casey remain Tied perfect. Now it's time for the most difficult part of the competition, of the coin toss. <laughs> That's exactly Ice. right. Tails, pop in here. Let's Tails. Get ready, man. Psycon won the toss, chose to send Casey up first. Again, there is a little bit of tactics involved in, in terms of the kill shot, especially on different levels. It's really nice to be able to see where you have to throw if you're that second thrower. And that is it. David Saikon, two zip over Gavin Casey. So David Sycon moving on. Let's check in with Melanie. Okay, guys, so let's let's continue what just happened between Mike and Pop. So because Pops takes that second one, it actually evens it at one apiece. They're gonna have to come back out and have that deciding throw. Right. And it looks like Pops is fired up about that. So certainly a confusing situation. But again to summarize, Malvi or Pops, the guy with a kilt, should have won that second match. And consequently, they're going to give him that win for that match, and we're going to go to a third match to try to complete the set. It was practice. It was practice. They moved the ball. They moved it up. Yeah. This is bizarre. It is unprecedented so far in any of our tournaments yet. We need to make sure everyone has their fair share. Six. Six. Now this is, I mean, both these players have had a little bit of a break. They're not in the same rhythm that they were before. 
And they also only get one practice throw this time, so. Six, six. You see if they stay in the same mindset that they were before or if the pressure of this final match gets to them. Yeah, I gotta say, I'd say the thing, the thing that surprised me most so far is how impervious all the six, players seem six. to be to the pressure. Five, this is yeah, four. it's, uh, you know, it, a lot of these guys haven't uh, competed on TV before. Some have, some haven't, but uh, it's uh, all about just staying in that proper mindset and focusing in on that Six, bullseye. six. Right. Will tie, shot five. Up bullseye, Malvi answers with a bullseye. Oh, it's actually a no. four. He missed it, wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. All Pop has to do is keep consistent, keep those bullseyes going, and then probably a kill shot at the end, and he could take this. Far so good. Six, six, throw seven. Four, six. Another four for Kump. Now down by four points. Stephen Malvey is in the lead. Looks like some of that pressure may have gotten six. to Kump. Six. For the first time, Kump is showing signs of frustration. Oh, and another four for Steve Malvey. So back up a little bit. He's four, still up six. by two. Final throw. On the final throw. Because Steve Malvey is up by two, he's going to be throwing kill first. Kill shots are live. Kill shots are active. Now, if he hits the kill shot here, it's over. That's right. Yeah. And it's over. Pops prevails. No one happier than his opponent. A primal scream from 58-year-old Stephen Malvey. Enjoy the moment, good sir. You are the winner in the semifinals. We'll see more from both these players coming up from Halifax. And welcome back to Halifax, Nova Scotia on a beautiful sunny day. Now we go into what you call the backdoor bracket, the B bracket. This is sudden death for both players. If you lose, you are eliminated from the possible prize. We're going to see Michael Kump, who we just saw in the controversial A bracket semi, going against Mario Zelaya, who's done a lot for the sport of axe throwing, one of the pioneers of creating the infrastructure, not just around Canada, but around the world. Correct, he's uh, the founder of the largest axe throwing venue currently, which is Bad Axe Throwing, and also the founder of the World Axe Throwing League, along with many, many other affiliates, now over 100 companies. So here's the B bracket, Kump and Zelaya battling to stay alive, and then we'll see Casey going against Benjamin Edgington, a Denver, uh, axe thrower who's in this final six. Obviously, Malvi and Sycon awaiting the survivors of this. Of course, Malvi and uh, Sycon will go head to head as well to try to guarantee their spot in the finals. So we've seen Kump, we're familiar with Kump. What else should we know about Zelaya? If, if anyone, he's the kind of the surprise to be in this final six, right? Absolutely. He, uh, ha having been in the Axeline community for a while, he's never officially competed before and uh, just apparently decided to give it a shot and is doing extremely well. Zelaya begins. Did that 
Bottom of the axe, catch the outside of the black. Six, six. It did. We're tied at six. Not the most convincing bullseye, but it counts. Now we're gonna see if any of the pressure starts to get to either one of them, because again, this is for them staying in the tournament. Six, six, tied at 12. Throw you can trust the styles in which these players throw. I mean, Zelaya's got the two hands on it in the wind up and then takes the left hand off. What do you see? Yeah, as you said, six, he has the two six. hands starting just to kind of obviously get a little bit of that aim there. But if you watch his footwork also, he likes to follow through completely with his throw. As long as the axe is out of his hand before he crosses that line, then there's no footfall. But he likes to use that full body six, weight moving six. forward to help push that throw axe in the right four. direction. This is throw Four five. throws into a 10 throw match. Nothing but bullseyes as we check in with Melanie. Apart from their actual approaches that you were just discussing, there's a little bit of a difference between the two of them that you can't see on the outside. Now, for Cup, we just mentioned it, is that unprecedented having to come back and re-compete to see if he would advance. And, you know, of course, he didn't. Pops ended up taking it. So Cup now has to deal with taming himself mentally to be able to handle this six, against Mario. Now, six, for Mario, he actually hurt six. his back several weeks ago. He said it was bad enough to where he was on two days of bed rest, and it affected his throwing for several weeks. He said, I'm just now starting to come back to where I'm feeling okay and throwing normally again. Six, but being six, on my feet all day for these tournaments has definitely had its effect. So curious to see how both of them cope with different situations. Mario Zelaya is, is definitely the... Cinderella of axe throwing in this axe throwing March Madness Six. here in Halifax. Six. It's a shot nine. Trying to stay focused and composed. The ninth oh. shot, and Zelaya missed it. Six. So it's a two point lead for Cup. Remember, it's still best out of three. Because he has the lead, Cup's going first and he missed the kill so now that's a two-pointer so Zelaya can win it with a bullseye and he does Mario Zelaya comes back on the last throw that's sometimes the price you pay for going for the kill it is much more difficult to aim higher. Those axes, as you throw them, are obviously, with gravity, going to start wanting to arc downwards. So having to throw higher makes it much more difficult than it even appears that to throw with these props. For one practice shot, six, each player six. gets a bullseye in their first shot. The tie throw two. A lot of axe throwers have been talk about the first time they start throwing and oftentimes it's, you know, they're invited to a birthday party at an axe throwing establishment and they get hooked pretty darn quick. That's right. Throughout the country over the past two years, across the world really, axe throwing venues have been popping up here and there and it's really just kind of the new exciting thing to do. Six, it brings the next six, level of excitement that you aren't able to get with five. your typical bowling no or anything five. like that. It's just something new and fun and instantly hooks. Zelaya. Six, again, six, living dangerously, six, but catches the edge of the bullseye. Midway through the second match. In this set of three. One thing I was noticing before we went on six, the air today was six, how the bullseye six. can get really worn out and how that can change how the axe will stick or perhaps not stick over the course of a competition. Six, Absolutely. Again, six. the axe is getting in there, as you said, super early on. Those axes softening up the boards will really help uh, long term, but there's kind of a sweet spot. You don't want it too warm because then they might get loose and fall. Six. And no six. one wants a drop down. So tied, this is throw nine. The depth of the wood is about an inch, inch and a half thick. Correct. Just enough to be able to get a good portion of that axe in. Six. Six. Final throw. Kill shots are live. Here comes the coin toss. Coin. Top lobby, top, yeah. uh, whatever lands on. 
So now we just did a coin flip to figure out who was going to throw for the kill shot first because they are tied up. And it looks like Zelaya got a closer look. Just went for the bullseye. So we go to a third match. Each player has won one. So they have the option of doing a practice throw. It's not required, but in this heated level of competition, uh, I'd be surprised if most That's players right zero. Take That's right zero. Yeah. practice shot. These throws count now. All right. Ten more throws to determine who moves on and who is eliminated. Six. Six. Seems like Mike Cum is getting back into that confidence that he was showing earlier. So that might just help him take this final match. Six, six. They have Go to three. leave the axe in the wall until the referee officially scores. It. Oh, and how about that? It bounced off. Got to get first into replay the, the day. Right, got a little bit of a head of himself. Didn't quite get on the blade there. Instead. Bounced right off the wood. That's no points for Zelaya on the third throw. Gives Kump a little margin for error. Check this Six. out. Left side of your Six. screen. 24 18 shot five. You can see as the axe rotated, it didn't rotate quite enough and hit the handle first, which made it bounce right off the board. He's good. He's good. He's good. Very good. Six. Six. Switch sides. How do you learn the technique of the rotation of the axe? It's. There is a bit of a learning curve, but it's all sort of feeling. You, you can feel how the axe is leaving your hand, and as you do, it will get that proper rotation or not. A lot of people, all they have to do is adjust their distance as long as they're throwing and the axe is rotating. It's just a matter of finding where your foot needs to be when it's raised. Earlier today at this Atlantic Outdoor Sports and RV show, we, we had a a guy juggling chainsaws. And there's an important uh, learning curve in that as well in terms of spinning them in the air. Probably a little more than juggling an axe, I would assume. Neither one should be tried at home without proper supervision. Absolutely. Six, six. So Final throw has stayed perfect. Up by six. Now just a bullseye would win it. And that'll do it. So Zelaya doesn't even need to take his last throw. Our valiant effort from Mario, but Cup uh, finally has a win. After it looked like he had one before, he got the pre-match, the post-match interview. He gets to talk with Melanie again. All right, let's talk one more time here. Sure. So you kind of had to go through an unprecedented situation earlier having to come back and compete. How did you level yourself out to get right back up again and come in against Mario? I'm having deja vu right now. Uh, no, yeah, so in that last round, I think they explained it already, that it wasn't quite past the fifth row, so we went through the third round. Um, I threw bad, uh, Steve whooped me, and then uh, now I had to play Mario, but... Uh, you know, you just got to take it as it goes. Uh, if you're ever affected by things, you really have to think to yourself, should I be? I should be affected. I'll never be affected. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you weren't affected at all. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Philly. 28-year-old Mike Cump from the city of brotherly love. Moving on. And he's not done yet. The fun Axe continues. Insurance.com, the official axe throwing insurance provider of the World Axe Throwing League. Get your venue insured today. Make sure the axe is sharp, and then you're good to go. Another elimination match coming up. We've already met Gavin Casey. 
There he is again, 34 years old from Kitchener, and his opponent, Benjamin Edgington, 30-year-old out of Denver. I'll tell you one thing, these two guys both went to the same wardrobe consultant. It seems like it. Uh, Gavin in the bright green shoes, as you can see there. Both throwing out of bad axe throwing in Denver and Kitchener. Six, six. Each player Five, starts two, two. with a bullseye. Do you think Casey has an advantage because he's already thrown under the bright lights, whereas Edgington's out there for the first time? He might, but six, Benjamin Edgington is the current Row world three, champion, as you can see there on the right, and he has had his time in the limelight this past December when we had our world championship. Ah. Certainly, uh, two-handed throwing four. style that we haven't seen a ton of so far. Yep, that is kind of his signature style so far. Uh, he uh, is using those two hands just to make sure that Axe has an extra punch back in the back of it. And it a bit. If you just joined us, best of three matches. Each match involves ten throws, six points for a bullseye, four, three, two, one, expanding outward, and the blue dots are the kill six, shots, where six, ten points, you can only go for it on your tenth throw or in sudden death. Each player perfect through five throws, and six, edging four, to distance, so there's an opening six, for Casey. He's got a two-point lead, and we send it over to Melanie, standing by with a special guest. Thanks, guys. Well, while we watch Edgington and Casey throw right now, we actually got to watch Kara throw last night. And first of all, your nickname six, is the Scorpion. Six. So that throw is so unique. I mean, your foot almost looks like it's going to come up to the back of your head. How did you develop that? So I'm a very tiny person. I just need a little bit of extra momentum. So I kind of just threw my whole body into it. And then people started six, saying that I look like six, a scorpion. And that's how the nickname nine. came ar around. <laughs> so it just works. Well, when you were throwing last night, you had so many fans in the stands who were rooting for you, and especially women. What does that mean to you to kind of be one of the female faces for axe throwing. Well, I mean, it's absolutely incredible. I love the Lady Blades community so much. And um, they told me last night that I actually broke the record for the first woman in a championship round ever. Um, so that's pretty neat. I mean, it's it's so great to have the support of everyone. I just, especially with International Women's Day, like having everyone cheering me on in the stands is great. Well, before you got up from that match, you said, oh my gosh, like I'm playing my teacher. Like I don't have a shot. Well, you did have a shot and you won. What was going through your mind when you realized that you had you'd taken that final shot? That was the most emotional match I've ever played in my entire life. I literally burst into tears. I, I didn't even know what happened. I put my thumb up when I hit the kill shot, and Mike just swept me from the side and picked me up. And it was just, I never thought that I had a chance against him. This is the man that taught me how to throw, who got me my first job in axe throwing, like started my whole career in this. And it was just absolutely incredible. When you start to move forward from this and you look at it, it's like you said, like it's your job, it's your passion, it's your hobby. It's kind of everything in one and not a lot of people get to say that. So where do you see axe throwing heading in the future? Uh, just onwards and upwards. We're spreading like wildfire. People love it. It's so much fun. It's a great community. Um, and, and we're hoping that the sport keeps growing and growing and gets more events like this. They are having one heck of an event right now, Kara. Congratulations again. Thank Fantastic you. throw. Thank you. <laughs> great stuff. Kara, the Scorpion six, Fritz. Don't six. mess with her. It was Ben Edgington that edged her out from the final six. But uh, Gavin six, Casey six, has a one match to not lead. And a two-point edge. Edgington a little shaky here. It seems like it. The, uh, again, as we said before, is a total mind game here. And six. Six, Maybe Gavin nine, having thrown earlier is going to give him that little advantage under the lights today, but uh, it might not help him either. And I should probably temper myself a little bit as well, because saying he's a little shaky, he only has six, five bullseyes six. and six throws. <laughs> That's right. Look, in this level, though, that qualifies as a little shaky. That that it does. You most likely won't Ooh. see this much accuracy with typical leagues Four, around the world, six. but. We have the best of the best here today. Gavin Casey remains perfect. Meanwhile, Edgington just missed again. So if Casey can remain perfect, he will close this out. Could be an interesting decision as to whether he goes for the kill shot.
put it away or whether he goes for a bullseye, which would force Edmonton to go for a kill shot for the tie. Kill shots are live. It would be very surprising if he didn't try to seal the deal with that kill shot. He's been pretty on fire today, it seems, with him. Gavin Casey. He missed it. Tried to seal the deal, took the risk, but does not. So that's off. a two, and now a decision for Edgington. A bullseye for the tie, a kill shot for the win to send us to a third and final match. You can see him, he's thinking about it right now. A lot of sportsmen like to just go for the kill shot just to keep it sportsmanlike, and I think it looks like that's what Ben's gonna do here today. Down by six, he could go for six. What will he do? Goes for the kill and hits it. To a third match we go. Did not want to let this match die. He wanted to make this set go on to its third. Gotta say, Edgington's a world champ. If you're Casey and you have a chance to eliminate that world champ, you better take advantage of it when you get the opportunity because it might not come again. Right, high risk, on. high reward. These throws are alive. Six off, through one throw. Six, six, tie, two, two. Gavin Casey won multiple league championships. He owns a landscaping and snow removal company in Kitchener. Also says he, he works part time as a DJ on the weekend. So if you're looking for a, a local DJ. Living on the edge, Edgington. Six. Tied to 18. No pun intended. Converts the bullseye. Talk about the fundamentals of the game, the distance from the board. If they go over the line, no points, right? That's correct. If they have a foot fault, which is when they move their foot over that front line or touch that line before the actors left their hands, and they're given a foot fault and zero points. You do see that people tend to walk over the line as the throw is gone, but again, as long as the axe has left their hands first, then everything's okay. Earlier in the weekend, we caught up with Gavin Casey. Six. Six. To events Five like this, 36. fortunately, because I have my own company, you know, I'm able to practice. So I have a target in my shop, and being that, uh, you know, I come in in the mornings, I'll practice for a bit, Six. do some work, Six. do some maintenance on my stuff. Lunchtime, practice a little more, and then usually before I go home, I have another few. Um, and then also, I throw in three leagues, so I'm busy. And I love it. Like, I just, I love axe throwing, so it's what I do. And he says he, every day, he has to finish the day with a perfect game. Won't go home until he throws a perfect game. All these com uh, pet Six. competitors today are going to be practicing all the time. I know uh, Benjamin Edgerton at the World Championship said that he practices for at least an hour or two every day. And here we're going into another coin flip because it is a tie game. It is. Both players have been perfect. Tied 1-1. One, one. It's a best of three. Because of that coin flip, it seems like Benjamin Edgerton is throwing first. Ten points on the money. Needs blue to stay alive. So we hit the sudden death. Each player will shoot one shot. They don't have to go for the kill shot until round six of sudden death. If they are able to continue this sudden death tied eight with each throw for the first five, then on that sixth one, the only thing that will be available to hit will be the kill shot. You don't have to go for the kill shot, but you certainly can choose to, as we just saw Casey. And that is to the right of the blue circle, and that'll do it. Casey survives. And advances. <laughs> Taking down the world champ, Benjamin Edgington. Gavin Casey standing by with Melanie.
Gavin, what goes through your mind? First of all, do you find it a little easier that you've already come out and thrown today, or do you prefer to kind of be the fresh guy out on the floor? It doesn't make much of a difference. At the level we're at, you know, we had a bit of practice this morning, and then coming out now, it, we got our five warm-ups, and we're good to go. To have the bad axe emblazoned across both of your backs, it, it attributes that you're competing against each other, but there's still that sense of community. So what does that mean to you to see a guy, you know, who kind of throws for the same club, different place than you? It's disappointing that, we're, you know, one of us had to go home, but it's uplifting that he's the current world champ, and I just put him out. <laughs> Definitely did, Gavin. Awesome. Thank you. Great stuff. We're down to the final four competitors here in beautiful Nova Scotia at the World Axe Throwing League's Canadian Open. Halimac Axe Throwing, bring our community to your city. at the Canadian Open here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Four players still alive for the pursuit of the title. In the B bracket, this is the backdoor bracket, double elimination. Cump and Casey are ready for their elimination match to try to stay in the mix for the money. They're ready to make their big entrance. Evan Leffler, Evan Walters, with you from the Halifax Exhibition Center. Trump and Casey, Evan, have each made their fair share of uh, gutsy shots. What do you anticipate from this elimination match? This match right here is just going to be a matter of millimeters. There's going to be, again, majority bullseyes, and most likely kill shots, and I would be very surprised if we don't see at least a few sudden death throws as well. I know there's been some conversations in the sport that the, the best players are maybe getting too good and perhaps changing some of the rules to make it more difficult. What have those conversations been like? Oh, absolutely. You know, this with how quickly this sport has expanded and grown and just the level of competition that's just come out of the woodwork, no pun intended, the, uh, the challenge is going to need to be heightened. But we aren't quite sure exactly how that's going to happen yet. We have a few ideas, uh, maybe some bigger axes involved, things like that. But that's uh, going to be something we find out later on. Certainly a lot of things on the table in terms of adjusting the target, changing the axes, changing the distance of the throws. Why did? Why was it decided that this was it? 12 feet is the appropriate distance for for standardized axe throw. 12 feet allows for a good long throw while also making sure that everybody stays safe. Again, you see some of these throwers; they like to kind of lean into their throw and take an extra step after the axe has left their hand. We want to make sure that there was a good enough distance, especially for the local leagues. Uh, for and newer throwers and such to six, make sure that they six. had that room to uh, like we saw earlier with Mario's axe bounce that no one you know accidentally gets clipped with an axe or anything like that so the 12 feet is really there for everyone's safety. Six, six. If you get double this how accurate do you think these guys would be from say 24 feet? Uh, they would have to then most likely go into a double rotation Again, just because of the axe weight on top of the head, it's going to naturally six, want to rotate. Six, so bringing it back to about 20 feet or so would have to incorporate more rotations into the axe, um, which we don't currently have, but uh, you never know. Very nice, very nice. Six, six, five, just as you forecast, perfection so far. Precise throwing from both Mike Kump and Gavin Casey. Casey, the 34-year-old from Tied Kitchener, Canada, and Mike come from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. There we go. Six, six. Tied, going to throw ten. Will be a coin. 
Ready to flip the coin here before the 10th throw. The correct side. Heads. Call the heads and it's tails. So, Gat so Casey gets the call. I'll try. I'll try. And Casey says, Come, you can go first. Right down the middle. 10 points. Casey needs blue to stay alive. He missed it. So the first man to come in this best of three. They're going to issue the practice and proceed. Let's check in with Melon. Talk about practice. Six. Six. <laughs> Go to Melanie in just a moment. Guys, you just saw the coin toss right there. Now, while well, Casey got to select which side first, if a guy from Philly gets to pick which side of the coin he's going to go with, which would be Kump in this situation, all the Philly guys will always pick tails because this particular coin has the Liberty Bell as the tail side of it. So I guess you can't pick against your own city in that case. Oh, that would be a blasphemy. That's a great note. Casey's axe that time didn't go into the bullseye completely square with the blade. It still obviously counts. Yeah, as the uh, as you take a look at some of these throws and how the blade goes in there, as long as the axe meets the wood, the surface of the wood is where we're counting the scores at. As long as they break that paint and the axe blade meets it, if it doesn't go past where the handle is in the axe head, then it is a valid score. If it goes too far back, then that wouldn't be counted. One might be surprised, but we have seen some throwers that throw fairly hard and have stuck it with the handle instead of the axe. That would also not qualify for points. This matchup has been a blizzard of bullseyes until Kump right there just came up to the right. Four points, Casey with six. So Casey is a couple more perfect shots away from sending this to a third. There you go. Six, six, final throw, kill shots are live. Gavin, you are throwing first. Up yeah. by two. Just below the kill shot, gets a two. Two. I'm sorry, this wasn't for money. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, see, oh, with the bullseye. That's barely a bullseye, but barely is good enough. You hear Mike Cump apologize ahead of time. He said it was for the win. <laughs> he said if it wasn't for money, I would <laughs> not go for it. But oh. Understandable. in the Abra The highlight of the Atlantic Outdoor Sports and RV Show here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. The World Axe Throwing League's Canadian Open. And our quest for the title continues in the A bracket. These are the two undefeated competitors. On the left, Stephen Malvey, the eldest member of the competition, still alive. Ages range from teenager to 60s in this event. And then David Sykon, the 28-year-old out of Penn State. Hope these players from the Philadelphia area certainly familiar with each other's games. And here we go. Oh, you dummy. Alvy. Six, four. Missed the bullseye one, in his first shot. A little hard on himself, but uh, I'm sure that he can get back up on his feet. 
coming into this match to be the kind of handicap the scouting report on these two players. Obviously, they're both 5 0 on the weekend. Is there a favorite in your mind, or is this pretty dead even? There's, it's uh, it's pretty dead even. You know, Sean Melvin has a lot of history, especially being uh, you know, one of the older competitors. Uh, clearly a crowd favorite, but David Sycon as well, being the runner-up for the World Championship last year. Uh, people are itching that he gets a win this time also. Three out of four bullseyes for each player means we're even 22 all. Four throws into this 10-throw match as we check in with Melanie. Malvi has got a lot going on outside of the kilt in his uniform today. Now, we asked him about the split flag hat, and he said, I felt that axe throwing right now is really hugely represented by the United States and Canada. So it's a half U.S. flag, half Canada. And then he's got a little pin on the side that represents one of his son's companies that is involved in axe making and throwing as well. Then he said there's such a huge Irish presence that's growing in the community that his shirt has the green and orange stripe down the American flag to represent the Irish culture. And Evan, I think you can actually explain the back of Cycon's shirt a little bit as well here too. That's correct. If you had seen the World Championship this past December, David Sycon was the runner-up next to the World Championship. Uh, the one match he needed to win in order to keep himself afloat. He did not realize that he was actually up by six points. All he needed to do was get another bullseye and he would have been absolutely fine, but instead he went for that kill shot and narrowly missed for one point, allowing Benjamin Edgington the win and the title of world champion. So, six up, kill shot is uh, kind of the phrase for David Sycon. The math gets more difficult in pressure situations. Heads! Heads is the call. Heads! Heads! Heads. Technically, Malvi's from New Jersey, so even though his home venue is in Philadelphia, wasn't obligated to call tails like the rest of the Philly natives. Well, it seems like the Liberty Bell worked in David Sycon's favor today. <laughs> Malvi started throwing when his oldest son, Sean, took him to throw for a night out. So he bounced it off the wood for an hour and finally figured it out. And here he is on the grandest stage. Goes for the kill. And Sycon matches it. So this match heads to sudden death. Heck of an atmosphere here in Halifax. Oh yes, two crowd favorites. Now sudden death. Each player gets one throw. They don't have to go for the kill until round six of sudden death. But when you have this level of competition, it's almost manageable. Each player was perfect for nine of their ten shots in regulation. Ten points apiece so far in sudden death. Tycon needs it. Got There's an incredible camaraderie between the competitors. That, that seems pretty special. Absolutely. You know, we have competitors from all over the world. The World Axe Throwing League represents 15 countries. And no matter what backgrounds you come from, everyone can come together and just enjoy the sport of axe throwing. So the miss from Malvi gives Sycon the opening match. So he takes a 1-0 lead in this best of three battle between two 5-0 players. No practice necessary in between rounds. They each begin with a bullseye. And again, Mike Kump is still alive. The loser of this match will face Kump to advance to the final. And in the event that the loser of this match or Kump can then beat the winner of this match, they'll have to beat him twice to win the championship and the check. Not to mention a big axe throwing ring. Yeah, that is beautiful. Poker, they win the bracelets. Here you get the ring. Still time to go five. For each of our tournaments, we have just something slightly different as the prize. For our open tournaments, we have a nice silver ring for oh, our wow. Arnold. Came right out. 
Ooh. Six, two. That was a, a missed throw right there from the guy they call Pops. Hand a little sticky. Sometimes they like to use a little chalk to make sure that grip doesn't get too tight. Three, right but I'm back into it. Six, six. 36, 32. Melanie earlier mentioned the, the rules about the size of the axis. But Melanie, can we send it to you and just remind us the regulations for the axis? Yeah, so as far as the weight goes, they're going to weigh in total about three pounds, the axe head at two itself. The shortest, and according to the commissioner sitting right there to your right, is a 12-inch handle. Two, three pounds, it's not all that heavy. Anybody can try this out. I'm sure there are folks out there watching who are intrigued and say, I, I, I could do that. How do they find a place to throw axes near them? All they have to do is go to worldaxethrowingleague.com. We have an awesome interactive map down towards the bottom on the home page, and it shows every single one of our 150-plus locations in 15 different countries. He was going for the kill to win it, and he got one. So all of a sudden, a bullseye evens this up and what a piece. Sycon able to put Nalvi away. Is that a, a miscalculation in your opinion from Sycon? Should he have just gone for the bullseye or is it just kind of good spirit to go for the kill? It's kind of good spirit to go for the kill. Honestly, uh, a lot of these uh, players are just Absolutely great sportsmen, and they're going to go for that kill regardless because they know that you need to be the best to take on this competition. One of the unwritten rules, I guess, because he could have won it with a bullseye. He could have. Third and final match of this best of three between Sycon and Malvi. Reminder of any part of the axe. Hits the line to the bullseye. Just a millimeter is on the out exterior of the black. It is a bullseye. Six, six, throw four. Have you ever tried throwing with a kilt, Evan? Oh, absolutely. I started out throwing with a kilt. Wouldn't do it without it. Have you ever broadcast a kilt? Not yet, but uh, who knows? We have the U.S. Open coming up here in... Uh, August and then the World Championship at the end of December, so it might be a little chilly, but I might don that kill. August sounds pretty nice. Yeah, that would be probably perfect weather, I think. But if Steve Malvey can don a kilt in Halifax, Nova Scotia, then I think I could probably manage during December. That is a great farm book. And here's some other events coming up. Tied at 36. U.S. Open, the end of August. John Bradley already won the Arnold Classic. Six, six. Yep, John Bradley's here today. Unfortunately, he did get knocked out a little bit earlier on yesterday, but he put up a great fight as well. And he does have an invitation to the World Championship as well due to that win. The winner of this competition as well will also be invited to the World Championship. How many axe throwers will qualify for the World Championships? We were going to have 64 competitors from all across the world. Wow. You said about 15 different countries? 15 as of now and more to come. You don't have to name all 15, but I'm sure our viewers, just like me, are wondering where are the 15 countries and David Sykon is going to move on. the controversial set we saw earlier here by the chilly beaches of Halifax.
AxeThrowingInsurance.com, the official axe throwing insurance provider of the World Axe Throwing League. Get your venue insured today. Hallamack Axe Throwing, bring our community to your city. In between sets, our referee sprays water onto the wood. Why? That way, the wood is a little more durable, doesn't make it as brittle, and also helps those axes kind of stay stuck in those. All right. It's just the second time that Kump and Malvi have met up, but it feels like a trilogy because of the bizarre events earlier where there was a misapplication of the rules. We thought Kump had won. Turns out Malvi had another opportunity, came back to win. And now this is really for everything, where it all matters. Winner of this survives to face David Sikon. Loser out of the running for anything but third place. Correct. This is essentially the second and third place match right here. Six, six, five, shot now that we're in the top three players, all we're going to see is bullseyes and kill shots unless one of them gets very unlucky. There's a little lack of luck for Stephen Malvey. And 30 years separating these two in terms of age. Malvey, 58 years old. Goes with both of his sons in Philadelphia, built a target in his backyard to practice. the best part about this sport as long as you have a good arm you can be a competitor i've seen last year at the world championship we had a young girl at 16 competing on the worldwide level and again as old as 58 and i've even seen uh, competitors in wheelchairs and all sorts of different demographics well, continues his perfect streak Looks like he's gained a little bit of that confidence back as well. Sure has. And Malvi living dangerously. Six. Six. Four, nine. 48, 46. There was a time when you would think anybody throwing axes would be living dangerously, but this seems pretty darn safe. Yeah, and, and it does come with having the high skill level of these competitors. You know, there is a bit of a learning curve, and those earlier throwers have a, you know, a bit of a difficult time making sure those axes stick in, but as long as they stick, it's mostly uh, more safe than a lot of people give it credit for. Cup for the kill and the win of this first match. Best of three. Malvi didn't even bother to throw. He will take a practice shot here. That was a perfect 64 for Cup. One thing to notice as well with Cump's axe in particular, you can see right there, the sanding of the blade he does by hand because he feels that is going to also affect his throw. A lot of players do. A lot of players have customized axes uh, from old school axes. They've refurbished themselves to brand new ones. Each, each player has their own particular throw and an axe to match. We were t chatting about this before in terms of the cost of an axe. They, they, it ranges from, you said, 10 bucks to a, a, a lot of money. Oh, absolutely. There are some axes I've seen, uh, hundreds and hundreds of dollars, um, but a lot of people can just go down to their local hardware store and pick up a hatchet and uh, start throwing in their backyard. All about personal preference. Pretty low cost of entry to this sport. Get an axe for 10 bucks. And it'd be nice to have a target, but just pick a tree in your backyard. That'll work as well. One thing in particular to take note of that uh, a lot of people who throw in backyards and things like that, uh, throwing at logs is a lot different than throwing at boards. The density is are very different. If, even if you're going to throw on log ends, uh, density is not quite as hard as it is with just flat faces of the board. So this is a little bit more difficult. Another reason why we were watering them a little bit earlier as well. That's a fascinating six, piece of insight. Six, just barely catching the black line. Sign of relief for Stephen Malvey. Eighth throw of the round. 
come. As not blinked. Not once. He seems to have found his groove again. So through nine rounds. Players perfect at 54. Again, they have to flip a coin now that it's tied to see who gets to throw first. And that throw could give someone a tactical advantage because you get to see what your opponent does first. So it looks like Navi won the toss and Cup's going to throw first. Close. You got it. We go to sudden death. Although it feels like we're already there. Absolutely. So the kill shots are again active for the sudden death, but they can really shoot anywhere. Oh, that's, oh, that's a that's bad miss. Just one point. This might give Kump the match. He just takes the bullseye and puts it away. He said he loves him, but Kump has beaten Malvi. It'll be Kump versus Psychon in the final. All right, you said it was deja vu for you, but really, to, again, the, the ups and downs of this and to face Malvi one more time, how did you approach that? Uh, just as I approach every match. Uh, every match is a new match. doesn't really matter. I play them all the time. We're all Philly guys, right? Top three, all from Philadelphia, all from the Philly practice space. Uh, it's kind of just the way it goes, I guess. Uh, honestly, each act is a new act. It doesn't really matter who you're playing unless you let it matter. Don't let it matter. Why be nervous? That's all you before you guys started throwing, you had a little bit of a conversation over here to each other. What was being said? Uh, we were just talking about how much we like each other, frankly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Honestly. Great stuff. Mike Cup Jr. moving on to the finals, where his opponent will be his fellow Philly guy, David Sykon. Between the math and the nerves, each of these players have had their moments. We'll see how it fares down the stretch at the Canadian Open. Oh, the battle has been intense throughout this weekend of competition at the World Axe Throwing League's Canadian Open. Michael Kump, Stephen Malvey, great sportsmanship, but it was Kump surviving and advancing. And now we go on to the finals, the culmination of this tournament with Evan Walters. I am Evan Lepler. How do you break down this matchup between two Philly guys? Both have looked excellent throughout the weekend. Well, it's actually pretty funny, and the qualifying throws that we had earlier on, these are the only two who hit perfect games all the way through. So this really is, the cream has risen to the, crop, to the top. Well, over the course of the competition, just one mistake can cost you, and it's been kind of fascinating to see how just one mistake can take a guy out of his rhythm. That's correct. The, just the tiniest little millimeter off that uh, bullseye or that kill shot, can really just take them out of the headspace that they need to be in to continue on. If you just joined us, let's review the scoring system. A lot of bullseyes. You get six points for the bullseye. Four, three, two, one, going around the outside. And pretty much every match, Evan has come down to the kill shots in the top corners of the board. You can only go for it on the 10th shot. That's for 10 points. Correct. Here we have the bullseye right in the middle, as you can see there. And up next, we have that those two blue kill shots up in the top for 10 points on the 10th and final throw. They can throw for either one. Either one works perfectly fine. Well, let's meet the finalists. David Sykon is the only unbeaten player in the tournament. He's 6-0. 
Hump had that one loss to Malvi, which he avenged in the last round. Malvi coming in third. The interesting wrinkle here, we, we play best two out of three for the set. If David Kump, uh, if uh, Mike Kump can win the the first set, then he would have to beat Sycon a second time because it's double elimination. If Sycon wins it, then he's the champ. That's right. He needs to beat David Sycon, not just in one set of three matches, but he has to beat him in two because David Sycon is the only undefeated player in this tournament so far. And if you're seeing Axe throwing for the first time, I'm sure you've got a lot of company around the country and around the world that this sport is brimming with potential. Six, six, five, and two, two. It's, it's amazing you talk to people around the competition, and it's such a familiar refrain. I, I wasn't, you know, didn't know much about the sport. I six, tried it six, once at a party five, or at a night out. Someone asked to go, and they became hooked immediately. That's right, all it takes is that one ax getting into the wood. Sometimes it takes people longer than others, but six, eventually, six, with good five, coaching, two, everybody can get that ax in there, and it is just absolutely satisfying. Six, six, five, shot five. Perfect through points. four shots. Players are six, a little bit different six, in their wind-up and approach five, to the shot. Three. Just slightly different there. Obviously, familiar with themselves. They've competed against each other before. Uh, friends from Philly. You can see that Kump walks fully into his throw, using that momentum to send that axe forward, while Sycon on the right tends to just let the axe do the work for him. Six, More of a set six. shot. Tied at 42, shot eight. Yeah. Six, six, still tied, shot nine. 48 all through eight rounds. And they're perfect, heading into the final. Six, Tenth six, round, kill shot throw. time. We're tied, kill shot, are live. I will put the point, I'll just call for you. They are tied, so they have to do a coin flip. David Sycon gets the call. David Sycon won with a tail, so Kump is throwing first. Sycon choosing to go last, see what Kump does. He puts it on the blue. Sudden death we go, not the first time today. Sycon goes first in sudden death. Each player gets one shot. And that's a kill shot, 10 points. So if Kump doesn't hit the blue, Sycon will have won the first match. And there it is. Sycon takes a 1-0 lead in the final. Undefeated so far this entire tournament. If he wins one more match, then he takes the Canadian Open title. There are a lot of athletes that might heads up in a situation like this, but it seems like both these guys are, are calm and loose. Kump in particular has just Six, and six, having a ball, playing five, to the crowd. You never think this is any different from his Thursday night at his local club. Absolutely, you know, and, and with these competitions, you six, know, these guys six, practice all the time. So really, the best, honestly, the best way they can be is just on a regular night. Try, try, try to keep that in mind. Slightly errant throw by Cup. Six, six. But it did catch the edge of the line. Meanwhile, Sycon continues his perfect form. Sycon being the runner-up for the World Championship this past year. Looks like he may make up for it with this first major tournament here this year at the Canadian Open in Halifax. Not only are both these guys fantastic axe throwers, they're regular lives, they're both engineers. Sycon went to Penn State, graduated 2013.
I studied aerospace engineering. Still has time to throw in multiple leagues a week and practices regularly. Tied at 36. Mike Kump, Temple University alum, also 28 years old. You would say it's uh, Boston I was six, 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 shot eight. First wobbly six, shot six. from Saikon, but it catches the edge. And Pump is, is in a pretty good hole right now. He needs to win these next two matches to force what would be a winner-take-all set. Six, six, the terminology is a little confusing, again, because the match is the round of ten throws each. The set is the best out of three. Best out of three matches is a set, and again, that's a reverse from the terminology we're used to in tennis and volleyball. Why'd you come up with that terminology? It's confusing for me and all of our viewers. <laughs> it seemed to, uh, seem to work well at the time, but uh, working even better, even better for Psycon at the moment. Yeah, Kump needs blue, otherwise it's over. And he barely stays alive. So that was one shot right there that could have ended it. Match point. Lucky for Kump, we are going into sudden death overtime throws. Now what's going to happen here, the kill shots are still active. As you can see there, nailed it. Oh, no wilting whatsoever from David Saikon. All points across the board are active, so if someone misses that kill shot and only gets a one or a two, a bullseye would be able to take it after that. Needs the blue. And he got it. Oh, it's way in. I wanted to believe. Yeah. Move on to the third sudden death throw. Close. Might be wide to the right. What's the ruling? Okay. It's good. <laughs> so sudden death continues. Now a fourth round of sudden death action between Sycon and Kump. This is the finals. David Sycon could win the money. for Saikon. And Trump answers. Uh, one more throw for sudden death where any points are available on the target. After that, only the kill shots will be active. An opening. Hard to tell if that's on the blue. This could be for the title. No, Saikon, not the champ yet because Kump just barely grazed that blue kill shot. Wow. Kill shots are only thing active right now. Anywhere else on the board does not matter. If they don't get a kill shot, they are not in this game. These two being the best of the best, it is not surprising that the kill shots do continue. And we'll go to round seven of sudden death. Round eight is the most we've seen so far, so two more. We have the longest streak of sudden deaths. Kump thinks he got it. Saikon a little low, but that's good as well, just barely. The game of kill shots. Remarkable display of precision. That one's good on the blue. Cup needs this to stay alive. And we press onward. So this is uncharted territory. 
Absolutely. Now it's it again is still anyone's game. And we've never seen this many sudden deaths before. Saikon refusing to blink. All right, I understand. That uh, blue circle is starting to look as worn out as the bullseye. That's exactly right. It's uh, looking a little worn. Also, memory at this point for both players. Goodness gracious. It was 64 all through 10 rounds. Through 10 rounds of sudden death, each player has remained perfect. Right down the middle of that kill shot. At some point, we're going to have to blindfold these guys and see if they can do it without looking at the board. Maybe have them throw it backwards or something. Because we might be here all day. <laughs> That's good. Again, these guys make this look super easy. But these kill shots are actually fairly difficult to get. I mean, just think about it. Psycon was perfect in the first match. Mm. Ten shots. He's been perfect 22 shots in a row in this next match. Seems like they both found their stride now. Mike Kump is impervious to that third wall that they talk about in theater. <laughs> He's just interacting with everybody. He, is, he loves the crowd, and it seems like they love him. Here's the 15th round of sudden death. Seems like they're peppering that right kill shot, both of them. Shouts from the crowd are telling them to go left. We need a new game for this sudden death because... Oh, <laughs> the long death. Just notice Kump kind of feeling the blade of his axe, making sure it's still sharp. I mean, this is just looking so routine, but it's not. Steph Curry and Clay Thompson have ended some Warriors practices like this where they just keep shooting until someone misses and they're there in the practice gym for about an hour and a half. <laughs> Absolutely. Ooh, a momentary pause from Cump. We haven't seen that. Doesn't affect him. Maybe we say that they gotta go for the other kill shot, the other uh, blue dot on the left side of the target. Seems like that's what the crowd is shouting for. But I don't think either one of these competitors wants to risk the less worn kill shot. A question for our crew in the truck. Does our graphics go up to quadruple digits? Because we're up to 254 right now. And we need a Snickers. That's now 20 rounds of sudden death. 30 straight perfect shots. Bullseyes or kill shots for both players. That's exactly why these two are the best of the best. And th this is for Trump to stay alive. Saikon has a 1-0 lead in the best of three. Not only that, but Saikon a perfect 6-0. and Trump did have the one loss coming from the B bracket, so Ooh. Give me a closer look at that one on the left. Is this the first time that Psycon has erred? A long look. And it's a one-pointer for Psycon. So finally, Kump prevails in the 22nd round of sudden death. An epic finish, which means Kump is still alive. <laughs> I gotta refocus and do it again.
Now they're going back to the bullseye. After that many kill shots, I don't think the bullseye is going to be too difficult for either one of them. I mean, did we just we just set a new record for the sport, right? 21. Oh, absolutely. Overtime rounds. 22. Finally, six, Cump won six. it. But just for the posterity's sake, it was uh, 284 to 275. Six, and usually, six, 64 is a perfect three. score. It does not get any bigger than that so far. History has been made here, as you all saw today. Six, six, tie to 18. Throw four. Both players know that any error six, is six, basically the end. Shot five. That's correct. They still do have the best two out of three for this set. We are still in the first match of. But, six, but if Cyclone six, wins this, it's shot. over. Absolutely. Both well, these guys, Philly area guys. Cyclone actually said, as a, six, as a big Flyers six, fan, he said his biggest goal in life is to throw axes with Gritty, the new Flyers mascot that has uh, tormented our minds ever since we saw him. But it's become a beloved six, figure uh, in some houses as well. I can't say that was ever a dream of mine, but it's it now is. Got to get gritty out to an event. Six, six, shot nine, still tied. Certainly feeling a little redundant. But the six, six, greatness kind of symbolized by that repetitive success. They are the only two here who's been able to get to that repeated success so far. Even though Kump lost the one match in order to put him in the B bracket, no matter who wins this. Kump won the toss, he's gonna go first. Let's check in with Melanie. Well, guys, when you were discussing the subject of how the board fares earlier and saying you don't want to get it too soft and beaten up because then the axe can actually throw back out. Take a look at that bullseye right now on both of them. They're both getting pretty torn up. And I'm sure, as you guys know, a timing restraint wouldn't really allow to come in and bring in a new board in the middle of this third set. And if they will get too worn out, it, it can make it harder to stick if the axe has kind of chopped that wood out. Saw that earlier today. Yeah, you want to make sure that wood is right in that kind of sweet throw spot. These throwers here point. eventually are going to get to that point. If they continue oh, these sudden deaths, those kill shots are going to be too worn to stay stuck, but the other ones are going to be too, not worn enough to stick in. We are in sudden death. If Trump wins, he'll force a winner-take-all best-of-three set. If Sycon wins, he will be the champion of the Canadian Open. Ooh, that was close, but I think it's on the blue. I was going to take a look and want to make sure it was good, because if it missed, he could have just gone for a bullseye and won it. Ooh, that one's close as well, but he gives a thumbs up. A couple shots on the edge. Some of those kill shot throws are not getting quite in center, so maybe there's a little bit of fatigue going on. Our referee has to be tired of just giving the thumbs up to the kill shot every time. <laughs> just again, a reminder, this is a double elimination tournament. Sycon is unblemished. Kump in the gray sweatshirt is the guy that came through the B bracket who suffered a loss, and that might be a little high, and if it's hey, too it high, good, that's going to do it. But it's good. As you can see, just a little bit, it looks like there's a chunk taken out of that wood now, which, as I was saying earlier, is going to get to that point where it's not going to be as reliable to stick in. Kump again pauses for a beat, needing this to stay alive. He missed it. With and the drop, David Sycon has won the World Axe Throwing League Canadian Open.
talk about sudden death, how about sudden success? Victory for Saikon here in Halifax. World champion runner-up, now the Canadian Open champion. Result of the loss before is the win today. A battle for the ages. David Saikon prevails. Avenging the kill shot misery of the past. He'll get a new shirt. He's the champion. Final shot of the finals needed to be a kill, and it bounced off for Michael Kump, making a winner out of David Sikon, and no one was happier than his opponent. Sikon, the Canadian Open champion, he's got a ring, and he's got a conversation with Melanie Newman. David, kill shot revenge. When his ax hit the floor, you hit the floor. What does this redemption mean for you? It just, it means the world, and for me, it's not about uh, redemption. I miss my grandmother's burial to be here, uh, and it broke my heart to be here, and this entire tournament was dedicated to me, so just bringing it home, my family who's watching is, I know I love you guys so much. I'm so happy I could do this for motto. I love you guys, thank you, so. Emo emotional stuff from David Sikon, 28-year-old from Philadelphia. Is the Canadian Open champion here in Halifax, and now I'll wrap it up for our World Axe Throwing League coverage. For Evan Walters and Melanie Newman, I'm Evan Leffler saying so long from Halifax, Nova Scotia. David Sikon, victorious to stream an entire replay of this World Axe Throwing League event, as well as other events on our ESPN family of network. Download the new ESPN app or visit ESPN.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, WorldAxeThrowingLeague.com to learn more. And we say so long from Halifax.